During the Cold War, technology theft was the order of the day. Common sense would lead us to think that the missions to obtain enemy ships were highly sophisticated and involved a lot of intelligence work, but this was not always the case. Sometimes gifts fall from the sky. This happened in September 1976, when the inhabitants of Hakodate in northern Japan watched in astonishment as a ship with gigantic wings landed on land near the airport. As the dust cleared, locals could make out the unmistakable red stars of the Soviet Union. A young soldier emerged from the plane and fired twice before announcing that he wanted to turn himself in to the authorities. That pilot was Viktor Ivanovich Polenko and the aircraft in which he landed was one of the jewels of the Moscow arsenal, a true nightmare for the West. This is how one of the most interesting stories that happened during the Cold War began, in this video we'll go through both its causes and its consequences, so get ready to travel to the cold south of Russia. To get into this story, it is important to know the protagonist. Viktor Belenko was born in the Caucasus area in 1947 and as a teenager served in the 513 Fighter Regiment, a highly respected unit within the Soviet Air Defense Forces. He was an exemplary soldier and a model citizen, or so it seemed. In 1976 Viktor was stationed in Chugyev, in the far east of Russia. His craft was a MiG-25 Foxbat, a powerful high-speed reconnaissance and interceptor aircraft that had been put into service a few years earlier. Later we'll observe this ship in depth and what the North American experts thought when studying it. Polenko had long since distanced himself from Soviet ideals, so on September 6, 1976, he took advantage of the power of his plane and the full load of fuel to flee. He traveled more than 600 kilometers until he was stranded at the Hakodate airport. There he was received by the locals and the U.S. forces stationed in the area. Perhaps you are wondering if there were other similar cases, and the answer is yes. In 1960 when a Russian pilot surrendered to U.S. forces in Iran along with his Su-9 interceptor. Then in 1973 Lieutenant Yevgeny Vronsky ejected while flying over West Germany where he was accepted as a resident. What makes the Belenko case special is that a deserter had never surrendered together with a state-of-the-art aircraft. The MiG-25 was one of the last projects that had entered service and had been worrying Western armies for a long time. Before continuing, do you remember other events of high treason that occurred during the Cold War? Leave your answer in the comment box. In the late 1960s, the MiG-25 was designed to patrol the vast Russian territory, with the ability to operate as both a reconnaissance craft and an interceptor. The fuselage was built around two Tumansky R-15B turbojets that allowed it to reach a top speed of 3,200 km per hour. It was truly impressive, especially if we take into account that this speed was added to four air combat missiles and a great detection capacity. For the latter, it used the Smirch A radar, which, with a power of 600 kW, is still the most powerful radar ever installed on a combat plane. The avionics consisted mainly of vacuum valves, a fairly old technology but necessary to withstand the extreme temperatures that certain sections of the aircraft could reach. The Soviet military used widely available and inexpensive parts, the goal being that mechanics could find spare parts for the MiG-25 anywhere in the vast Russian territory. Production was so efficient that about 1,200 units were completed in a short time. But of course, the United States had no idea of any of these characteristics. In the early 1970s, the Pentagon obtained satellite images, but the only thing that could be made clear is that it was a ship with wide wings, an advantage for any combat aircraft, since it generates better weight distribution and, therefore, greater maneuverability and climbing ability. The disinformation and the Soviet scare campaign took effect. Washington was genuinely concerned about the performance of this interceptor. In fact, the threat of the MiG-25 was the main incentive for the launch of multiple projects of the U.S. Air Force in an effort to keep up. Despite repeated attempts, the United States was unable to obtain substantive information about the mysterious interceptor from the Kremlin. 
However, this changed that morning in 1976 when the Pentagon received notice that a Soviet pilot had deserted, taking with him the ship that had kept them awake at night for years. But what to do with such a gift? The question was not so simple, the plane was in Japanese territory and the permission of the local authorities was required for any study. The government of Japan only allowed ground tests, so the MiG-25 was disassembled and thoroughly studied, but no flights were carried out. American engineers agreed that the MiG was a powerful and highly powered interceptor, but it was far from the invincible monster that terrified the West. One of the erroneous beliefs was that the fuselage was built entirely of titanium, when in fact that material was only used to reinforce specific parts. Let's keep in mind that one of the goals of the Soviet Union was to create an inexpensive and quickly produced aircraft. Another problem encountered was the poor view of the cabin. The same thing happened with the vacuum valves, although they were appropriate for the needs of the plane, it was an old technology that would gradually disappear from combat ships. As if this were not enough, Belenko provided details of the weaknesses of the MiG-25, for example, its inability to intercept fighters and bombers flying at higher altitudes. He also had a copy of his ship's instruction manual, which was very useful for understanding not only the mechanics but also the Soviet doctrine. After extensive study, the MiG parts were returned to Moscow. As a side note, the government of Japan charged shipping and repair costs to the Soviet Air Force. As is to be expected in a case of high treason, the defecting pilot forfeited his rights as a citizen of the Soviet Union, something known as death in absentia. Belenko received political asylum in the United States where he worked as a teacher and consultant for the Army's air programs. Beyond the fact that the analysis of the MiG-25 only served to remove the veil of mysticism that the ship had, the consequences were remarkable. From Moscow, security measures were developed to avoid new cases like Belenko's, such as limiting the amount of fuel in the ships stationed near the borders. On the US side, the irrational fear of the MiG-25 was the trigger for the development of the F-15 Eagle. To date, Belenko's remains one of the most well-remembered cases of desertion. If you like this content, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and activate notifications. You will also find links to other videos in the description. Thank you for joining us until the end and we'll meet again in the next military aviation videos.